day, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this introduction to Folio's product development lifecycle. My name is Peter Murray, and I am the open source community advocate at Index Data and the host for today's video. This session is part of a series of onboarding videos for community members. You'll find links to the other videos in this series in the description of this video on YouTube or see the member onboarding button on the Folio project homepage at www.folio.org. Julie Bickel is an IT product manager from LMU in Munich, Germany, and is becoming the product owner for patron notices and staff slips. Julie? Thank you, Peter. Yes. Um... This video today, this session today, will be about the development life cycle of the Folio product. I'm going to talk um, to you about how features are determined, prioritized, and released to the world, who the product owners are and what their work is, and how you can contribute to the development of the Folio product. So, first of all, what is the Folio product? Essentially, it's the library service platform, the online software with all the apps, and the ever-growing documentation about all this. The functional development of the platform is guided by the Folio Product Council, who manages the scope of the product and also ensures the relevance, cohesiveness, and transparency of the Folio project. So knowing this, how is functionality actually determined to be developed? Folio follows the principles of agile development. And since the beginning of the Folio project, large chunks of higher level work have been defined into epics. Um, these can refer to a particular app, for example, the inventory app, the epics can refer to workflows, for example, circulation rules and loan policies, um, or they can also refer to um, non-functional requirements such as UI responsiveness. They're kind of like sub-projects for developing Folio, and they're documented in a system called Jira. Now, parallel to Jira, as part of the Folio project, there are special interest groups, also known as SIGs, composed of experts from libraries around the world. Anyone is welcome to join in and participate to talk about their area of expertise and interest. There are currently about 10, 15 SIGs, the number's growing, and each represents a particular area of library work, for example, metadata management, or resource access. During the SIG meetings, product owners may be present. As the name suggests, uh, they are people who own or take ownership of developing parts of the Folio product. And these product owners um, during the meetings can bring ideas and discuss further development work with the experts um, of the SIG, sometimes in the form of mock-ups, or a SIG member may bring a topic dear to their heart um, to the meeting to discuss. And from these discussions, product owners will break the epics down into features, uh, which are relatively self-contained pieces of scope. For example, search by barcode in the inventory app. And curating this planning backlog of features is a key role of the product owners. So now we have our backlog of features to develop. Next, how do we uh, decide what to work on first? As a first step, the portfolio project does have a long-term vision, which provides a high-level roadmap to follow in the development work. As a second step, partner and implementing libraries can rank the features that are documented in JIRA, and the accumulated score would determine the order of development. So the higher the score, the higher the priority. 
Starting with the Kiwi product release, a new pointing exercise was introduced, providing an extra layer of prioritization on top of the JIRA ranking. And as a final step, the capacity planning team will essentially compare the backlog of features and their priority score with the capacity of the development teams uh, to ultimately determine what functionality can be released in which cycle, thereby determining the release features and dates especially, all this with approval of the product council. Okay, so now we know what we're gonna work on and when and in which order, Next question is, how do these uh, planned features actually become reality? Product owners will further break down features into user stories, and they form the backlog items that are used by developers to guide their work. Dev teams follow the Scrum framework. From the backlog, they pull the stories they can develop within each two-week sprint. Each flower named re uh, release cycle consists of multiple sprints, which, along with new development work, also include um, necessary work such as quality testing and bug fixing. During this time, also product owners will be updating documentation and writing test cases for the functional testing, um, which takes place during the, the so-called bug fest. Um, towards the end of the release, uh, to which most anyone is invited and welcome to participate and help review the latest um, release. After the very last bugs have been fixed, the new features are then released out into the world at the end of the release. Now, if you, as part of a developer group, you don't quite follow this exact framework, we'd still very much welcome your work and your help um, when it fits in the Folio platform and contributes to the cohesiveness um, of the Folio project. So we've seen how features are determined, prioritized, and here, here now developed. Has this got has this got you all motivated? And now you'd like to know, how can I get involved? Well, whether you're a librarian mo um, willing to share subject matter expertise, a developer, a UX or a UI designer, or you're ready to own and manage part of the Folio project, uh, product, um, please do go and check out our Getting Started pages uh, for next steps. Additional resources include the numerous videos on the OLF uh, YouTube channel, including this series of introductory videos, and also the links to the resources listed in this uh, presentation that then send you to the Folio Wiki. Finally, and I'd say most importantly, do sign up and join the conversation in Slack. It's a great place to get started and ask for guidance in your next steps. We would be thrilled um, to see you there soon. And um, yeah, that now concludes this session on the development of the Folio product. Um, thank you all for listening. And Peter, back to you. So this does conclude our introduction to Folio's product development lifecycle. Uh, thank you, Julie, for sharing your expertise today. We invite you to view the other videos in the Foley, Folio community onboarding series by looking in the description of this video on YouTube or following the member onboarding button on the Folio project homepage at folio.org. We look forward to seeing many of you in the Folio community. Have a great day.